That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. You know, there's there's no need for categories such as Democrat or demolition party, as you know, I call them Republican, conservative, liberal, libertarian, right, left. As soon as you have these categories, you're going to then have these different tribes. And as soon as you have different tribes, you're going to inevitably have conflict. If you have more than one tribe, you're going to inevitably have conflict. Unfortunately, as human beings, we haven't evolved past the insecurities that fuel that type of preemptive aggression. We just haven't evolved past that. And we haven't learned from from history, especially now that people are trying to revise history in order to fit whatever agenda that particular tribe is trying to push. You literally can see this loop that we're in. You can see it. Look at all of the wars that are unnecessary because war is always unnecessary. Look at all of the aggression and all the things that, that men are doing to men. And we're not talking about natural disasters and, and just threats that, that we have just by living. I'm talking about all of these things that we create that are completely unnecessary and they stem from our insecurities. It's fascinating. Now I say all this to preface something I wanna show you. Now I'm in California and I wanna bring this to your attention, whether you're a Californian or not. And this is coming from a Substack that that a friend of mine shared. And oh, let's just jump in. So this is Aaron Curiarty, MD. And his Substack is called Human Flourishing. I'll leave the uh, the link in the description where I where possible. I, I recommend that that you check this guy out. He's he's making complete sense. But what I want to point out in this particular uh, article uh, that that he's written. Now he calls this the, the tip of the spear, and he's talking about biomedical security state and and where you know California is uh, headed. And then he also mentioned that California is, is kind of like the testing ground for these types of things. And if you're paying attention, you know this to be true. It's basically California and New York that are going to be testing these things. And what they're testing is, is basically, you know, are, are you guys ready for communism yet? Are you guys ready to give up your freedom? Are you guys ready to give up on this experiment of power, you know, by the people and for the people? Are you guys ready yet? Because once again, this is getting in the way of a particular tribe's agenda for control and power. It doesn't matter, history has shown us that socialism and communism are just, they just stack up bodies and tragedies by the truckloads. And it doesn't matter for some reason, like, like we're just, we're, we're caught in this loop, just, just refusing to learn from history. We keep voting this stuff in, and then we look at the results, and then I don't know what, what a person's mind blames the results on because they see how it affects their lives adversely, and then, they, and then at the next opportunity, they vote for it again. <laughs> it's fascinating, but look, this is what I want to bring to your attention here. California has been the tip of the spear for novel pandemic policies. My home state's failures are legion, and it would be tedious to recount them all. For an aerosolized respiratory virus, the safest place to avoid contagious spread is outside in the open air. Once we realized that the coronavirus spread in this fashion rather than, the, than by res, respiratory droplets, opening the windows and classrooms would have done more for schools than plastic barriers that impede airflow. California boarded up outdoor basketball hoops. We closed the beach, sunny and windy, open and spacious, probably the safest place on the planet. Then there was this brilliant move where in San Clemente, they, they filled in a skate park with sand. They did everything they could to ensure that people were incentivized not to go outside, were, were incentivized not to exercise their freedom. They were told to stay in their homes. Understand that this was all unconstitutionally done. These mandates were never legal. They're not laws. They were just testing 
communism to see, like, are you guys going to just do what you're told? Are you guys going to push back at all? And if so, how many? I, I, it's, it's a, it was a fascinating experiment. And they learned a great deal. I know I learned a great deal about, about Americans. And, and it was very surprising <laughs> that not only did, did Americans give up their liberty like in the blink of an eye, but then they were weaponized by the people that were, that were taking advantage of this. They were weaponized against people who were contradicting. They, they turned against neighbor and against family, against their own blood for no reason at all than they were told to do so. It, I, I, I found that very, very alarming, very scary, but also very fascinating. But this is really what I want to show you right now. Because, you know, everything that, that this gentleman is writing here, like I said, it just makes sense. You know, he's backing it up with receipts, which is very important. But I want to bring your attention to this. This is what really caught my eye. The leading sheep of a flock known as a bellwether for the bell on its neck tells you which way the flock is headed. California still serves as the nation's bellwether for political and social movements. Consider 10 bills that were introduced in the California state legislature in January of 2022, that's this year. And this is really what I wanna to bring to your attention is these 10 bills. Now, I'm gonna read them off. But first I'd like to say this, what red-blooded American who believes in America and believes in the Constitution would ever bring this legislation to the table. That's the thing that's, that's insane. Who, who actually believes in freedom, who believes in their fellow Americans, who believes in all of the tenets that, that our country was, was built on, would ever bring this to the table? Now, let, let's read this off. Number one. This is SB 871, adds COVID vaccine required immunization schedule for all private and public schools, regardless of whether these vaccines receive full FDA approval. Number two, AB 2098, classifies any medical opinion that runs contrary to the establishment's COVID narrative as misinformation and subjects physicians expressing such views to charge of unprofessional conduct, which is subject to discipline by the medical licensing board. So that one alone says, okay, we don't care about the truth. What we care about is that you do whatever it is that we put out. If we put it out, that's what you go by, not the truth. And any body, any physicians, that dissent from this narrative, we can now punish them. Number three, SB 866, lowers the age of COVID vaccine consent to 12 years without parental notification or consent. Number four, SB 920, authorizes medical board to inspect a doctor's office and medical records without patient's consent. Number five, SB 1464, requires law enforcement to enforce all public health guidelines or lose their funding. So this basically, you understand that, right? What that means is that they can use agents of the state, law enforcement, against the populace. And if the law enforcement refuses, they can then punish them by taking away their funding, basically destroying them, right? The whole defund the police. So even if the police don't obey these unconstitutional edicts, they can be punished. Number six, SB 1479 requires schools to create long-term testing plans, test children without parental consent, and report, and report test results to the California Department of Public Health. Number seven, SB 1390 prohibits any person, entity from making statements the government deems misleading by any means, including internet or ads. Number eight, SB 1184 authorizes school health personnel to disclose children's health information to a third party without parental consent. Number nine, AB 1797 creates an immunization tracking system, giving all government agencies complete access to vaccination records for all citizens. And then finally, number 10, AB 1993 requires proof of COVID vaccination for all employees and independent contractors working in California. Now, as I said in the beginning, what red-blooded American would even bring this to the table? These things have to be written up. They have to be conceived, written up, and then brought forth by our legislative leadership, 
These people were placed in positions of power to protect the people, to serve the people, to be a voice for the people. That was not it. What that does is turn us into, as, as this article suggests here at the top, this biomedical security state. It turns us into China. This is what China does. China can just do it. They can just board you up in your house. They can pull you off the street. They can track you wherever you go. You have to do whatever China says or else you get severe and swift repercussions. They want us to be a communist country. No American, no American would want communism. No American would want socialism. Yet we have, we already have aspects of socialism in our country, we already do. The welfare state, social security, um, our educational system is socialist. Um, minimum wage is socialist. There are a lot of Medicaid, Medicare, that's socialized medicine. Like we already have these things and every single one of them has been rotting us from the inside out like a cancer. And they want more of it. They want us in bread lines because that's where this always leads. They want, they want to see just our American dollar just in the streets blowing in the gutters because it's worthless, because that's where this inevitably leads. And they don't want to teach proper history because they want to make this mistake over. Because as long as they're in power, as long as a mistake happens, they don't really care what happens to anybody else. And understand, these, these, these terrible people who are just empty inside, they're not immortal. So they only live for, you know, for like a life expectancy of, of a human being. And so, you know, you're looking at what, 75 years and for men, especially women live longer, but you're, you're still, you're looking at 75, 80 years and they just want to take whatever they can take and get whatever they can get. And then they die and they leave us wading through the trash that they created while they ripped everything down, while they decimated education and they raised crime and they decimated the economy. It, this is happening right before your eyes. I just want to bring that to your attention. Whether you live in California or not, if this is on the table, if this is being brought by leadership in California, this communist police state crap that obviously has nothing to do with the welfare of the people, they want to they raise your children so that they can make new soldiers that are going to be obedient to them. They want to instill their values into your children, their evil values. They want you to do as you're told or have swift repercussions. They want to, they want to militarize law enforcement to be just an arm of their authority, period. And they want to penalize anyone in law enforcement who doesn't want to fall in line. If this is being brought to the table here, understand that it's being brought to the table other places because these enemies of America, they're all, they're, they're, they're no longer at the gate. They're inside the compound. <laughs> they're, they're, they're already here. They've already Trojan horse us. They're already inside spreading like, once again, like a cancer. They're metastasizing all over the U S and you know, if, if you can't see that it is not about Republican and Democrat, if you, that's all a game to keep you distracted and keep you divided. If you can't see that this is about Americans who are patriotic and, and, and have a value system, you know, Judeo-Christian values that this country was founded on and they believe in those, doesn't matter if you're Christian or not, you can be Muslim, it doesn't matter. The Judeo-Christian values are ones that support individual autonomy and meritocracy and free market capitalism and the family, the nuclear family and, and education and integrity and honesty. That's the foundation. But the power's in the hands of the individual. It acknowledges that. It acknowledges inalienable rights that are not endowed by the government or by any other man, but by a higher power. There's those Americans and then there's everyone else. And everyone else they want that taken away because it removes power away from them. They're just selfish and they're evil and they're uneducated in the ways, not, not that they're stupid, but they're uneducated in, in the ways that, that actually matter because 
they haven't themselves learned from history. These tyrants have existed before and they end in the guillotine and they still are not waking up. They still believe that they were born to rule over and they're just born better for some strange reason. They're just empty. And I liken it to, because because the stories in the Bible are, are, are very, I mean, they're very spot on with regards to human nature. They're, they're very, very spot on. Um, like I said, whether you're a Christian or not, I look at, I try to search for truth. And when you see these stories and you see how they play out and, and, and you see the similarities that are in your everyday life and you're like, well, this was written so long ago, how could it possibly have even, even remote similarity to present day when things are, are so different technologically and whatnot? So you have to at least acknowledge that there's, there's some relevance there, whether you're a Christian or not. And so if you look at the story of Cain and Abel, this is basically what I'm saying. The Americans who are patriots, who believe in, in, in these values, who believe in this country and what it, was, what it was built on, they're able. And then all these other folks are Cain. And that's it in a nutshell. And you're not going to have, you cannot be a supporter of goodness and not be on the side of Abel. You can't be someone who believes in their fellow man, who has compassion and wants to help people genuine, genuinely. If you're on the side of Cain, it, you just, you can't, I'm sorry, you, you picked the wrong side. And the demolition party is on the side of Cain. The left, definitely on the side of Cain. And anybody who doesn't believe in individual autonomy, individual sovereignty, anyone who doesn't believe that we have inalienable rights that don't come from a, a from a man-made institution, but come from a higher power. If you don't believe those things, you're on the side of Cain, and you're on the wrong side of this. And that's all there is, just those two sides. And so the only thing we need to, need to decide is, are we going to be Americans who believe in what this country was, was, was founded on and is willing to to, to fight for it because it is the best way. You're willing to fight for it. Or are you on the side of Cain? Are you going to be that, that sociopathic, sociopathic narcissist who just wants, who just goes for self, who believes that, that the self is, is the center of the universe and you just live by your own personal truth and you live by the tenets of getting while the getting is good and you fool yourself into believing that that that's compassion and that like no it's not unfortunately you you lack any kind of self awareness you're you're evil that's the side of evil and so you 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 there's there's no middle ground there you're either able or you're cain and these this legislation that i showed you those 10 bills that's on the cain side because that leads to nothing but destruction. Nothing but, nothing in that is going to bring anything good on any level, not on the family level, not on the economic level, not on a societal level at all. It's going to further fracture our culture. Cain, disease culture, Abel, you have a very prosperous culture that's going to ensure that our children are protected and well-educated, that they're giving a good model for behavior. It's gonna ensure that fellow man treats each other with respect, that we communicate, we listen to all ideas, we're compassionate, we're tolerant, able. Cain, able. You decide, <laughs> you decide, but just know that choosing the wrong side, whether you see it in your lifetime or not, will always bring nothing but our end.